All right, folks, welcome to Power Playground. In today's episode, I'm going to show you the intros of 3D printing with a particular material. This is a ABS, for instance, here we're going to be doing, we're going to be focusing on today. And it's a very popular material. It's a little bit tricky to work with if you don't know what's going on. So I'm going to show you the basics, uh, what we're going to need for prep. Now, what I have here, I have a couple of these. I have quite a few of these. These are Heiko snippers. I'm going to put these in the description. Really useful, really cheap. I recommend picking up a few because they're great for cutting wires and plastic and the spools of plastic. Uh, basically, what we have here, it's an acetone ABS slurry, as they like to call it here. And I'll open it up real quick, real shortly. So, yeah, it's just, oh, let's focus in. There we go. So, it's kind of... A little bit of a gooey, pretty runny, really. But uh, basically, the longer the print, the thicker you want the material to be. So some other things you'll want, whenever working with this, because it's acetone, this stuff is uh, highly flammable, pretty hazardous. You don't want to breathe it in a whole lot. So you want to get yourself a good respirator. I picked this one up for like $16 at Harbor Freight. Get a good pair of gloves. Pick these up at Harbor Freight as well, really thick ones. And uh, you need some razor blades. Also gonna need one of these guys. And I recommend picking up a pair of tweezers in order to uh, just extract any plastic that comes off the printer tip. And of course, I like to keep a little beaker. It's not Ziploc bags of just scrapes that I, I just recycle the plastic as soon as I'm done, the excess plastic on the surface. Either put in this beaker jar, little Ziploc bags. And that's pretty much about it for materials we need to prep for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna don my mask and I'm, I already have my 3D, oh, let's go ahead and uh, pan around here, I'll show you. All right, so we got our uh, bed set up. 230 degrees Celsius for the tip, or the actual uh, nozzle, or the extruder, as they, we like to call it. That's the uh, general rule of thumb temperature for ABS. It may differ from your printer. Anywhere between 230 is usually the low point. I've seen people print with 225, although I wouldn't recommend it uh, yet, because you'll get your nozzle will clog, which is a real pain to clean out, or anywhere up to 245, which is really the highest point 3D printer should go in terms of temperature. So we got that set up. And right now, in order to apply uh, the acetone slurry to the bed, we had the bed set at about 60 degrees Celsius. So about 60 degrees, that's good. Uh, that's not gonna be our final temperature once we start printing. I wanna go up towards 90 to 100. But yeah, let's go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and put on my mask. And let's go ahead and apply this mixture here. You may not be able to hear me. I'll probably voice this over, maybe. But you want to scrape, you want to get your spatula here or whatever the hell they call these. Scrape off any excess plastic from a previous job. All right, so we scraped all the plastic off our spatula. Now what we want to do is apply a generous or a decent amount to this bed here of our slurry. And then spread it evenly. You flip your spatula occasionally. Now I'm going to put a little bit more on, so because uh, this is going to be a really long print. We're just going to cover any sort of gaps we had previously. Now don't worry about over applying this because you can uh, scrape up any of the stuff we have left over and put it back in the jar to recycle. All right, folks, so we got our uh, bed nice and applied here. Now I've already preloaded our SD card. We're already at, temp at proper temperatures. Now what I need to do is I just need to uh, change out the filament real quick. With this printer, it's pretty stupid easy. Uh, all right, so with this one, I'm like I said, I need to switch out the filament. It's pretty easy. Go to utilities, filament loading, and then we unload right. It'll um, make sure the nozzle's heated up proper, and then it'll start activating the stepper motor to go backwards. And then once it's uh, uncaught, there we go. Went ahead and got it out of the grips of the nozzle here. You wanna make sure you run your thumb along where the filament's coming out or else it'll just go crazy. Okay, so we got it. There we go. Just make sure it's nice and secure. You can bend it a little bit because we'll just clip it off and use it as bed. And we'll put it back. So I'm just gonna rear load the printer here. Got our TARDIS blue filament. Or I guess it's not only TARDIS blue, but it's, it's pretty close. And then we just, there's like this little tube you push back here. This is just for this particular printer. Now, if you all are curious about what printer we're using, this is the uh, FF Creator Pro. I'll put a link in the description for, uh, it's, 
I think last time I checked, it's about 1200. It's well worth it. It's dual nozzle, so you can do dual material, which I'll be doing videos of that in the future here once I figure that out. I haven't really had the chance to do it just because of time and all that, but we will be doing videos like that, which I'm definitely excited about. Um, Actually, I'm a d I forgot to. Uh, okay, so now we want to press OK to exit because I'm trying. Now we want to load right. There we go. Now it'll not try to spit it out. Is it going yet? I should be here soon. Yeah, there we go. It's starting to creep. There it goes. There's the orange. And we want to make sure that the orange turns into blue, which just got to give it a while. There we go. We're starting to see it. There it is. Now with other printers, let me tell you, let's press OK now. And I clearly like to call this the pubic hair because it kind of resembles one. <laughs> okay, so we got it, and I'll try that at home. Usually use your tweezers, but I don't know. I have gloves on, so screw it. All right, so <laughs> there we go. So now we are ready to rock. We have our filament loaded. Everything is up to temperature. We have our bed covered. And now we're going to do print from SD. So we're going to print this cool little like hex hexagonal vase. Or it might be like pentagonal. I forgot. I've Twisted hex vase. Okay. So hit OK. Just go through the little menu. Got to say, it's a pretty decent printer. The only thing that I hate about it is the software for it is bad. It doesn't use like the slicer or anything, you know, like most, tr most generic open source 3D printers use. It's more... It's basically a ripoff of the MakerBot, so it kind of uses some of that software, except I think it uses Replicator G, which doesn't like large files. So, okay, so now we're heating up to 90 Celsius, and we're gonna wait for that, and we're gonna go ahead and switch to our time lapse here. Alright, so I went ahead and took the piece off the print bed here. Sorry that the time lapse is a little out of angle. That GoPro doesn't really have a preview screen like most cameras do that I was using. So here's a cool little vase. Some things I forgot to mention, uh, make sure you're doing this on a glass surface attached to your heated print bed. That'll get in focus. There we go. Yeah, you don't want to do this directly on the print bed because 
it is a pain trying to scrape the acetone slurry off of anything but glass. So yeah, they just keep that in mind. All right, so whenever messing with acetone, don't ever forget to wear gloves because it will screw up your skin. Also, don't get on any sort of plastics, especially ABS, because it will eat through your plastics. Hence why we make the slurry with it, because it's super easy for it to, of course, just eat through that plastic and make that nice slurry there, and it vaporizes really quickly, especially in higher heats. I forgot one more thing here. Okay, so what you want to do whenever you're printing with ABS plastic, especially for prolonged periods of time, is you want your print your 3D printer to be enclosed in a space. I used to this enclosure I had or this rack I have it on used to be enclosed when I had a different printer that didn't have its own enclosure. Now that this one does with the drawer, oh clear, cool. Yeah, with the drawer and this little top glass and the sides are all off. You could take them off if you don't need them, but yeah, you want definitely want something like this because it'll keep the heat in, and you want you want the part to be heated as much as possible. Um, ambient temperature about I don't know, around 90 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I forgot the exact Celsius. I'll post it somewhere on the video here. And there we go. There's our final product, that cool little vase. That came out real good. Just a testament to this cool little printer here, this FF Creator Pro. It's a little bit on the loud side with that fan, but you rarely have to fuss with it. I mean, I, I've only had to calibrate this thing like maybe two or three times since I bought it. My other one I had to calibrate it like on a per print basis. It was that terrible. So yeah, it's definitely, it's pretty solid piece of kit. Like I said, the software is a little bit uh, clunky. It doesn't allow you to do like huge prints, which kind of sucks. But eh, overall, it's a pretty decent buy. I definitely recommend it. It's really super easy to use. So... I'll link it up in the description for this particular printer here. And expect more videos as well. I got some other cool little projects I'm thinking about showing up here. Um, just thinking about what to do first, really. So, yep, uh, keep watching, keep subscribed, and like this video if you liked it. And, hey, check out some other videos that I posted.